Well, hey everyone, it's a nice enough day to be outside to give you an update on the area of the garden that is undergoing some renovation and that I'm working on a project with Roy Diblick um, to take you all along for. Now, um, if you recall, the reason this project is happening is because we had to have septic work. And over here, you see the septic work that we had done. So that is where the new septic tank that leads to our septic mound went in. The old one was over here, actually on the other side of our little stream, little drainage creek here. Uh, that tank has been properly abandoned. This is the new tank behind me here. Chaos ensued. It was only a day and a couple hours the second time they came back. And uh, it was a far, um, it was difficult for me to watch. And so I left. Um, it was really disruptive. Of course, um, they ripped up parts of the garden over there that were not supposed to be touched. So we'll see where things ended up. I had moved a lot of plants in spring, um, but probably some things didn't make it. This is to be expected, right? Anyway, today we have a real treat for you, which is Roy refining the design that we talked through when we met. So the last video I did with Roy was that. And now he's refining that design. And what's really neat is that he's actually added in a few plants that I didn't know were coming. And conveniently, one of the things that happened, uh, you may recall we had two pagoda dogwoods over here. I'm standing next to one of them here. These were the pagoda dogwoods that came out of the containers last year, and we just planted them here in fall. Well, the first thing the septic guys did when they got here was pull this one out of the ground and set it aside for two days in freezing temperatures. And then when they plunked it back in the ground, they broke half of it. So I was trying to come up with a way to let Roy know that, hey, by the way, this design we worked on that involved two pagoda dogwoods, uh, one of them is likely not going to make it. Well, as it turns out, uh, Roy only planned for one, so it works out great because we still have, have the one in the design. So I'll just quickly show you what's happening here, but hang out because the real reason you're here today is to watch Roy's design process. And I'm telling you, this is like crawling into Roy Diblick's brain to find out what his design process is. And so many of you have asked for some assistance in basic design, how you get there. And he talks through the whole process here, and I think you're gonna find it so helpful. So let me just quickly show you what's happening here, and we'll flow right into that. So just across this little bridge and to the left is the area that Roy and I are designing together. Um, and it, it was disturbed during the process, but not as badly as some other areas. Um, and you can see this pagoda dogwood closest to us here is the one that was badly damaged. I've cut most of it away. Uh, the other one that's left here is, is still looking good. So this pagoda dogwood, I will probably just call it a loss. Over here, this is the area that I didn't really expect to end up quite so moonscape. So anyway, I will be working on something, planting some stuff over here, but that is not a part of the project with Roy. So this is actually the area where I moved all the plants out of the way. Um, to orient yourself, you can see that over here in the sunny spot, and forgive the exposure here, right here is the tricolor beach. There's the ginkgo behind it. That ginkgo was, they, they worked the roots real hard next to that. We'll see how it does. So it's nice enough out today that I have a couple of garden supervisors out with me. So we're gonna roll into Roy now, um, and I hope you find it really helpful. So just a quick note on the math that Roy's using. He talks a lot about dividing the square footage by 1.56 to figure out plants on 15 inch centers. Someone asked a question about this in the last video, and the answer to that is that remember that you don't figure in the area on the edges, remember? Because you're not going to plant a plant right on the edge. So that accommodates for a square footage where you're not planting a plant right there on the edge. And of course, Roy's got his system down and has been using it, obviously, very successfully for a really long time. Okay, I really hope you enjoyed it. I am learning so much from working with Roy, but also I'm just so enjoying uh, soaking up all of his knowledge and his plant philosophy. Uh, it has really been wonderful, and I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. So check it out. Hi, everybody. I'm at one of my favorite uh, places to work. I don't really work in an office. I have many offices. Right now, 
I like moving around and I love the sound of people. So I'm at the Ridge Resort in Lake Geneva, which has one, look at the workspace I have here, and a coffee shop. I got my tea and a bagel. And right now I'm working on Aaron's project. You saw how we got together and had a discussion about her site. And then we had a little workshop together, her and I, to discuss it. We came up with this conceptual plan after our discussion. And it kind of locates the bed, general bed sites. It doesn't detail the area just yet. It's more a thinking process of the patterns we put together and how the patterns will work together. You can, you can see it, it's uh, slightly confusing to someone, but to Aaron and I, we had, we had a, good, uh, a good talk. And, and it was fun too, to communicate the style of planting. So right now I'm transferring it to more details. I'm laying out the bed more accurately. And still I'm working on a rectangle because the bed is going to be fluid. We can curve the rectangle when we get to the property and then we can adjust it with field adjustments. So you can see this is the, the bed, the more detailed bed lines. There's the, the shrub located in the center. There was a cornice and these are the patterns. So I'm gonna fill them in and I'll go into more detail uh, about the plant combinations that we talked about. An example here, this one with the hash marks, that's uh, Molinia heidenbrot along with Echinacea purpurea white swan, a tall white coneflower. So we'll get that in more detail. We'll have plant numbers, how many plants we need, and then how we can access the plants and then uh, set up a planting date and put them in. So this is the first phrase, and you can see, let me show you that eraser. You see that? I've been using that eraser because you see how my bed lines change there? You can see where I've erased them. I had to compensate for square footage of the plant and the plant pattern, so that's what you do. You have a pencil and eraser, and this is actually joyful work, and I'm, it's not costing me anything because I'm not trial and erring, er, erring using plants and moving plants around just yet. So let's have fun together, and thanks, Aaron, and we'll talk about this, and we'll have, show some more detail coming up. You can see I've taken the conceptual plan that we put together with uh, Aaron, and I've drawn the lines in a little more detail. You can see how they were kind of just wavy and thoughtful and getting some idea what we're doing. So I've taken on put them down in a little more detail, and then I figured out each area, this area, this area, this location, and I figured out square footage. So I looked at this area right here. We have 54 square feet. And when I divide that by 1.56, that gives me plants on 15 inch centers. Or I divide it by 2.24, that's 54, and that gives me plants on 18 inch centers. And I see I need 24 to 31 plants, roughly, to fill this area. And then I use a 15 or 18 inch center, depending on the plant species I select and the way they'll grow into each other based on their growth rate and growth habit. So I've done that for all these areas. This is 27 square feet. This one is 75 square feet. This section is 50, 74, and 50 square feet. And again, I divided by 1.56, 50. That gives me 22 plants. Divide it by 50 by 2.24, that gives me 31. And I kind of meet in the middle. Some will be 15 inches apart, 18 inches, or they might all be 15 inches apart, depending on their growth rate and growth habit, growing into each other from youth to maturity. Each plant has a different growth rate and growth habit. So you have to know that, and that way you'll understand how the plants will grow into each other. My next step then, if you see where I started, is to locate the plants on the plant and get general spacing. So what I'm gonna do next, this is the millennia, that's the echinacea. I'll fill this in with all the plants that go in here and give general spacing for it. So we'll go over that next. And this is, this is the first phase, the second phase actually, from our conceptual plan. So everything is working off of this. So it's all, it's all stages. And then you just take each stage a little bit at a time and you keep defining it more till you have more details in your plant numbers. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look at the next stage that's laying the plants out in, in each section. I'm now putting the plants into the patterns that we created, and you saw a little earlier, and I'm using abbreviations. This is a, the E is Echinacea purpurea 
white swan. And the M is uh, the Molinia Heidenbrot. And I'm gonna have to apologize to you right now. I'm gonna go over to this one section. I don't know the common names. And I know you're sometimes frustrated that I use the Latin names. It's not because I'm trying to believe I'm some highly educated person. It's just that's the only way I can know the right plant to get the right plant. This L represents Limonium latifolium. And one common name out of many is called status. So if you went somewhere and just simply bought status, you could buy three or four different annual plants or four or five different perennials that are called status. But if you use Limonium latifolium, you'll always get Limonium latifolium. And that's the same with the SC is Salvia crystal blue. And there's, uh, there's a whole book written about salvias. So if I just say salvia, you really don't have any idea which one I'm, I'm talking about, even which one to get. It's totally confusing. And, and it's, it's kind of respectful when you take the time to learn them too. And it's very helpful for you to become, to become a, a more adventurous and loving gardener. So you can see I'm putting your patterns in. I'm gonna go over them a little later. But what I'm doing now, I see the, the cornice that's here, the shrub. I'm looking at about three feet where the crown is, the, the, the tree is going to shade, the shrub is going to shade the area. So what I'm doing, I'm, I've got a gap here. So I'm taking about two feet away from this line I made. I'm going to go two feet closer and two feet closer on this side. And I also know I have a uh, sun here and I also have a uh, uh, well-drained well, well -drained soil because the area, when I looked, with Aaron was starting to slope back here towards her area that where the water was running through. So in this area, I'm gonna use the plants of this Champsia, Ciespitosa Goldtow, back here and sloping down. So right here, I've got, I'm gonna gain about four to five more feet. So I'm gonna create a different bed pattern right in this area. So I'm gonna draw that in now, put a, another group of plants that I really didn't talk to Aaron about, but I think will tie nicely to the, the uh, Coreopsis here and the Panicum, Coreopsis verticillata C, Panicum virgatum. We're going to use uh, ruby ribbons. So let me let me put that in, and then we'll go over what I'm putting in there and how these two will relate to each other. And remember, what I'm doing is I'm just drawing on paper. Even when we take this out to the beds, and I have all these little dots here. They don't have to go in that exact space because they're going to be emotionally put these in. They might be here. And the, and the, and the uh, salvia here, 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 we're just gonna get a cluster of them. And this limonium, well, we could shift that over a little bit this way, simply because it feels right. The idea is getting the number of plants in, and that range is anywhere from 22 to 31. So what I did here, I have about almost 30 plants in here. And, and here, let's go to this one. So with the limonium, I have about 30 in there. Let me explain why I put 30 in here, close to 15 inch centers, because the salvia and the limonium can grow together in a tighter situation. And they're, they're smaller and they have tight growth habits. The crown of the plant grows very tightly. I have a section on my YouTube show about putting plants together and creating plant patterns. So if you go to my YouTube show, I can describe it in more detail the, the creation of plant patterns based on growth rate and growth habit of the plant from youth to maturity. So, and over here, I have the plants farther apart because they, they grow wider. The millennia gets much wider. It gets, it has about uh, 18 to 20 inch diameter at the base. And the echinacea is, has a, a wider base, but it's much, both these plants are much more vertical too. So they're collecting like going upwards. Okay, let me sketch in that that new area we're gaining here, and we'll go over uh, the idea about what I put in there, and I'll give you some of the reasons why. And then we're still having fun. I'm back at my favorite workstation. I'm at the Ridge Hotel in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And as you remember, the last time we left off, I had the cornice right here, and I had created too much space here for this area of geranium to go into. So I was going to extend an area about five feet out from this point to this point. And you can see the erase marks I made. See the two erase marks up here? I extended it from here 
to here. And that way I could add another uh, grouping of plants. So I really didn't talk to Aaron about this, but I tied in plants that would have continuity with the patterns I've already created. I'm kind of I'm kind of constructing a quilt in a way. But I added Allium Big Beauty. It's a beautiful Allium with large flowers the size of a little bigger than a golf ball and wide foliage, about uh, three quarters of an inch wide. And I just grouped the Allium here and see how I bleed it over into the geraniums. And this is geranium macrorhizum that we that uh, are planted up here, not on the table or on the floor, but up here in Aaron's garden on that hillside slope going down into the area where the water runs through here in spring and it becomes modestly dry unless there's a heavy rain in summer. So when it goes uphill here. So anyway, let's get back to this. I use the Allium Big Beauty. See the Salvia Crystal Blue? I get Salvia Crystal Blue with Limonium Latifolium. And again, I'm going slowly over these names. I, I just can't, I don't know common names. I mentioned that earlier. But you can, you can actually look them up and you can jot down the three, four, five common names each plant has. And it's a lot of fun. You can share that with your friends also. Um, so anyway, I took the limonium. See how I stretched it into here? I kind of bubbled it in, a little bump here. And I bubbled it into the Deschampsia, the tufted hair grass. See, what did I just give you? I gave you a common name into the Deschampsia gold towel right here. So here's limonium. Salvia crystal blue. So it's spiky and cloudy. The flowers are cloud-like on the limonium and spikes on the salvia and clouds here. And then I put a few of them in here. And then I introduced geranium tiny monster. It's a hybrid between geranium sanguinium and geranium psilostemum, three of them here. And they're very nice. They get about 20 inches tall, about 20 inches wide, dark green foliage and very burgundy foliage in the fall with a kind of magenta flowers that keep flowering off and on through the summer. And then in this section, the Coreopsis verticillata gold. Shall see how I bumped one into this area? So you, you try not to have straight lines. They kind of overlap a little bit. And later on, you can soften those lines, and we'll go into that a little bit more. So let's look at this area. This is the geranium macrorhizum that was carried over from the top I showed you earlier. And this area, we look at the 27 square feet on this section. And if you remember, I talked about dividing it by 1.56. That gives me 15 inch centers, which would be 12 plants. And I divided 27 by 2.24. That gives me 17 plants on 18 inch centers. Then I can meet in the middle, depending on the growth habit and growth rate of the plant from youth to maturity. So when you look here, the, the stachys humulo have a tighter crown and smaller diameter as they mature and, and their mature age. So I can put them tighter. So actually in this area, I've got 15. I'm in between 12 and 17. I'm on, I'm on about 15, 16 inch centers. And this will knit together in three years. It'll be tight by June, limiting sunlight hitting soil, therefore limiting weed production. And, and weed, uh, it'll be more weed suppression than it will be an opportunity for weeds. We'll cut the sunlight out. And over here, I took out two of the Sparablis, or Sparablis aeroides, which is a very nice mounding grass with silver green foliage, with Salvia East Friesland. I took out two of the Sparablis, see here, and I put GT, GT, Geranium Tiny Monster, and that's to pick up the repetition of it over here. So as you walk by the garden, you'll see moments of it here with dark green rounded foliage and moments of over here. So it creates a harmony in the plant patterns as, as you view them. Now let me go down here to show you the difference in growth rate and growth habits. This is 75 plants, again, divided by 1.56 and 2.24. So I have 34, 15 in centers, 44, 18 in centers. And I'm using Millennia Heidenbrot and Echinacea purpurea white swan, the white coneflower. And they both have vertical growth habits. So they're gonna be much taller than they are wide, but still their width is going to be about 20, 20 inches. The Echinacea will probably have a width of about 60 inches in three to four years. And But but as you notice, I have some gaps in here. I left a little bit, of, see the spaces? I got a little bit more gaps in here because I'm going to encourage another plant to grow in here with them, Heringium blue glitter. 
Orangian blue glitter has thumb-shaped flowers that are oval-shaped and a medium blue color. And the blue will contrast nicely with the white and mingle into the foliage of the Millennia Heidenbrot, which is very vertical. And I'm gonna put these in emotionally. I think one here, and it should be what I laid out. I put I slide this over, put it here. One back here, maybe one here, one over here. So I'll have four of them drifting through here with the white flat cone flowers. Then you can see the space here between, this is Coreopsis, Verticillata Golden Showers, and this is Panicum Ruby Ribbons. Now these are Panicums slightly shorter than the Millennia, but not by much, but the foliage is denser. You can't see through the foliage like you can on the Millennia, and the foliage on the Panicum is a nice red color in mid-August. Coreopsis is gold and yellow, dense foliage, and it's about as tall as is wide. It's about 36 inches tall and it, it, with short rhizomes, gets around 30 inches wide in four years. So this will make a nice group of golden yellow with the nice clean vertical foliage of the panicum. But with this spot, I'll put a few Orangium here. Orange, again, it's emotional. I might move this over here. I might slide this up here. And I'll put an under Orangium here and then I'll carry another Orangium into this section in here. So for both of these areas, I need a total of eight Orangium. And again, there's no place they have to be. You'll fit them in emotionally as you lay out the garden when this becomes reality. And as you can see over here, this is just Champsia Gold Top. Very nice cloud, cloud of flowers, an, an upright spherical grass, very stiff. And this will flow into the drop off where it goes to where the water will flow through it. And as we flow down into more moisture, this Champsia can give way and more shade will be here too, to Carex bromoides. And we can put some Aster Shortii in here, which is a nice blue Aster that the deer don't tend to eat. If there's heavy deer pressure, they may eat it, but they tend not to. And we just prune those in half in June and they'll flower lower, which will be in, 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 in a more reasonable height with the other plants here. And then as we go up the hill back here, Aaron had a slope with Brunera, and this is where the geranium macrorhizum were. So again, you can see the patterns. You can see the lines we've created. So what we, what we have now, we have, a, we have a good beginning. We have the plant numbers we'll need to do the planting in May. And then when we lay it out, we'll still make adjustments and those are field adjustments. We'll make a few changes. And you know, this, this might go a little bit more this way. We might bring the Dischampsy into this to back this up. It'll just, it'll just be how we feel and how the, how the plants are being laid out. But what it gives yourself is a good beginning and when you get a good start, you got a good chance of the future of the planting going in a good direction. And you, the joyful gardener, will always be making slight changes because that's what gardening is. Gardening is, it's your, you're kind of like a, uh, oh, an orchestra leader. You're, you're, you're deciding how the, the musical tones will be a heavier, lighter, a lighter, lighter presentation. And then the other thing is you have fun. And it does take a little more thought about going from our conceptual plan. This was our discussion we had that day at Simple. And you take it, you define it a little more here, to be a little more, have a direction. And then later when you lay it out, you're still a little bit more flexible. And you can always make changes a year later, two years later, five years later. So have fun everybody. And if you have questions, just let me know. And the next time we'll be together, we'll be, uh, I think, at Aaron's house laying the planting out. So thanks for your time. And I, I want to thank Aaron, too, for the opportunity to share this with you and and all, all the people on, on your YouTube, all the folks on YouTube with you. So let's all have fun gardening. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk soon. Bye.